everybody. This video is going to be about um, the week five final paper for Lib 101, The Art of Being Human. You've made it to the end, and now um, you'll take part in this activity that will be the culmination of your entire experience. So first of all, this paper needs to be five to six pages. Uh, normal double spacing, don't quadruple space between paragraphs, use 12 point font, one inch margins. Um, don't make me reformat your paper, that's annoying. Um, and you should easily be able to fill five pages if you do the requisite research on this topic. So what are the humanities and how are they relevant to our lives? Illustrate your discussion with reference to one specific ancient medieval text assigned in this class and explain its relevance to modern society. Explain the text using one of the frameworks we explored in this class. For example, myth, mythology, philosophy, religion, or literature. You should refer to at least two secondary sources but note that this is not a research paper. You should be able to complete the paper drawing only from the required resources. Here's how the paper should be formatted, and I'm gonna explain it as we go through. Your introduction should include a clear definition of the humanities and a concise summary of their relevance to our lives. So, so no more than the first page. Do not define the humanities by the lexical definition that you find on the internet. Um, you might start there, but your definition should be more of a philosophical definition. Um, it shouldn't just be the humanities are uh, mythology, philosophy, literature, art, music. Um, I don't care about that definition. That is a definition, that's the lexical definition or uh, a definition by subclass or an enumerative definition. But what we're looking for here is what is your definition of the humanities from a more philosophical perspective? So try to define what the essence, so we read Plato in this class, right? So another way to think of this is Socrates asking you, what are the humanities? And you might say, well, it's this, that, and whatever. And he'd say, no, but what is the essence of the humanities? What, what is it that links all of the humanities together? By the way, there's no right answer here. There are some definite wrong answers. <laughs> um, but there's no one ultimate absolute right answer. So th this will be a struggle, and you should struggle. And always remember that... Um, that struggling is important in order to learn. So why are the humanities, so you define the humanities in their essence, their essential nature, or attempt to, and then explain the relevance to our lives. And we've talked about this in the course, how are the humanities relevant? We have the video from Martha Nussbaum, and so make sure you watch the video, it's in my other announcements, it's on YouTube, where she talks about the relevance of the humanities to our lives. So that should be, that part should be easy. The second part of that. The definition part is probably the hardest part of the whole paper. But, but just do your best uh, and you'll be fine. In your next paragraph or the second page you can think of, explain the methodology you'll use to illustrate your claim about the humanities. State which text you will use and which humanities framework you will use to analyze your chosen text. Give a brief summary of that framework, making sure to explain why it is considered part of the humanities, what distinguishes it from other humanities disciplines, and why it is a good framework for interpreting your chosen text. This is the part that throws students off. And uh, the framework it, language is a little bit ambiguous here. So the framework you should use in this, if you're, is, if you're gonna use philosophy, then you would want to explain philosophically that definition um, or sorry, philosophically, the text that you're gonna choose. Um, so you have to state what text you'll use. Now, some students like just generally say like, I'm gonna use Augustine's Confessions. No, that's not what this means. It means a specific text. So take a specific text from one of these readings that we've had, don't use a secondary resource. Do not use a secondary resource. I'll say it one more time. Do not use a secondary resource. Use the primary text from these, uh, these great works that we've read and find a part of it that connects to, going back again to the top, how the humanities are relevant to our lives uh, and relevant to modern society. Um, and so, you know, in, in, in uh, the, uh, the Phaedo, uh, you know, Plato talks about the afterlife, right? So perhaps you choose a portion of the text of the Phaedo. Now this text should be no more than a half a page. You don't, don't give me the two page, you know, 
um, quote where you're typing everything out and then try to count that as two of your pages. Also, this doesn't really count toward your overall word count or your five pages. Um, so remember that as well. So you need to choose a text uh, that relates to modern society. So there's plenty of people who are still religious and believe uh, in the existence of God. Some religious people even don't believe in the existence of God or that there's not a God concept. And so there's probably something relevant for us to learn from Augustine, right? Or from the Phaedo about the afterlife. Uh, some of you might be more interested in justice and you could talk about that. Um, or following your calling from the apology. Or, um, um, or going all the way back to Homer, you could talk about what it means to be at home and find a passage you know, that talks about being at home or being in love or trying to get back to your loved ones or whatever it might be. So include that text and then talk about the framework you're gonna use. So it's probably easiest to use a philosophical framework where you explain philosophically why the text is important and then relate it back to your definition. But you could do, you could do a literary analysis context. So it just says literature here, but what you would really, the methodology would be more literary analysis uh, where you break the text down and perhaps in, interpret, interpret it in a new way and then apply it back. Um, if you wanted to uh, explore a religious studies context, not just religion, and don't relate it back to whatever your dominant form of religion is, but if you wanted to use a religious studies context, you could evaluate something based on religious studies more broadly construed. And then mythology, this, that's a hard one. You might be examining mythology, but if you actually were using a myth, mythological framework, you would actually create a myth. So one thing you could do, if you really wanted to, and I've never had a student do it, is create a myth. Now you'd have to frame the myth that you create into this context. So you'd have to explain why the humanities are important, use a text from you know, one of the readings we've had, and then create a myth of your own that relates back to that and then relate it back to your initial definition. It, it's kind of fun to think about, probably really hard to do. But if you are creative and you wanna take a shot at it, feel free, it'd be really fun to grade. So that's the framework. You use one of the humanities frameworks to interpret your text. So then you interpret your text, this is the third bullet point, using the framework you selected, prim focusing primarily on the aspects of the text that are relevant to life in modern society. You may need to summarize some aspects of your chosen text before trying to explain its relevance, but your discussion should be primarily analysis rather than mere summary. Um, so, uh, so what this means, and this should be no more than three pages. So the second part is one page as well, uh, where you explain the methodology you're gonna use in the text that you're gonna use and how it relates to our lives. And then the third part is your interpretation. And this is where you'll enhance your explanation of how it relates to our lives. And this is three pages. Um, now, what you shouldn't do is say, like, in the Phaedo, Plato says this, and then he says that. And then uh, somebody else pipes up and asks him that. And then this happens, and then that happens. That's not, in, that's not a college-level interpretation. That's a book report. We don't need, I know, I already know what happens in all of these books. So you don't need to tell me what happens in the books. What you need to tell me is you need to interpret the passage and tell me why it's important to our lives today. That's what you should be focusing on. That's the more interesting question. You don't need to tell me that, um, that then Plato kicked his wife out because she was crying when he was about to die and all this stuff. Well, Socrates, sorry. Um, and then finally, in conclusion, no more than a page, summarize how your chosen text fits into the definitions of the humanities you stated in your introduction, and also how it serves as an example of the humanities relevance to our lives as you summarized it. This is why your definition needs to be something more than the humanities are mythology, religion, religious studies, um, literature, philosophy, art, and music, or whatever. Because if you just say that, then you can't relate it back to your definition because your definition just lists off a bunch of stuff. But if you say the humanities, um, the definition of the humanities are the arts of the mind that lead us to greater knowledge of the human soul, then you can relate it back, your interpretation of the text and how it's relevant to our lives, 
back to your definition and say, see, I showed you how, um, I forget how I just defined the humanities, uh, but I showed you how this teaches us an art or enhances our minds uh, so that we understand more about our human soul. Uh, and, and this is how I did it. And that's how you wrap it up. You wouldn't just say like, see the text I chose was from philosophy, so it's the humanities, so it means something to us. You could say that, but the score that you get on your paper uh, will not be um, a great one. Depending on the other elements, it might be a moderately good one or okay one. Um, but you need to do the other method if you want to get up in the A and B range on the paper. Um, I already told you about this. Paper must be five to six page double spaced in length. Don't make me reformat your paper. Don't use 14 point font. Don't use 1.2 inch margins. Just don't do that. And I know some of you will, and probably you're not watching this video. Um, and I will reformat your paper, and then I'll tell you that your paper wasn't five pages, and then you'll lose points for it. Um, and then you, oh, the other thing, you need to include two scholarly sources. So remember, your chosen text, the main text, needs to be from the readings, not from Justin Harrison's interpretation of Plato. Who cares about what I think? Go into Plato yourself. I care about what you think, and I want to hear what you have to think about it. Um, so use that, but then you need two scholarly sources. Check the uh, recommended resources in the class. You should be able to find um, resources that fit. You don't need to go to anything outside the class. You can, um, but there's no need to. Read the articles in the class. They're good. They're academic articles. They're peer reviewed. And you should use, always use those uh, over things like Wikipedia and um, just generic .com websites. Don't use .com websites. They tend not to be academic. Um, and of course, don't use uh, cheating websites either. Uh, and then it needs to be an APA. Um, so if you have any questions about APA, uh, you can go to the APA guide that is in the Writing Center in the left-hand banner right here. Um, and just follow the methodology there for citations for different books and articles. All right, I look forward to your papers. I hope you found this video helpful. Feel free to reach out to me with any questions you have, and uh, good luck.